myself believe that planet Earth turns slowly. It's hard to say that I'd rather stay awake when I'm asleep. As everything is never as it seems. Welcome one, welcome all to Tremendous Opinions Podcast, episode 53. Yes, that's a banger right there. Owl City Fireflies, I had to slow reverb that thing for you and serve it up nice and proper on a freaking Monday afternoon. I tried to do this podcast twice over the weekend and the universe ain't working with me. Dude, I served it up nice and proper for you folks last night. Bang the song out, did 30 minute podcast just to find out that the camera died like three minutes in. But I had it charged. It was just like full of memory or whatever. It didn't beep and let me know. But like I've said before, and like you fine people know, your boy DJ Wit Wiki is a mush. I mush everything to pieces, bro. I probably didn't even click record. And who cares, dude? I'm just going to ride it out. And if it's not recording again, ah. <sighs> I don't know. I'll just skip this week, bro. I'm not meant to do a podcast this week, if that's the case. I have some god-awful notes that have horrible segues in between the topics. But you know what, dude? (sighs) And not even the failed attempts at this podcast. It was the uploading issues last episode. Editing for freaking two days, the one before that. (sighs) The truth? Don't care. Don't care don't care still don't care i don't care i don't i don't care i'm done caring baby and it's freeing i feel free don't care bro fireflies that's the summer anthem i thought about that the other day just because i think i just associate that with summertime for some reason and it's getting hot as crap out here i'm freaking sweating (sighs) <sighs> slapper yeah so you're welcome for that and uh, I hope I freaking served it up proper for you folks <sighs> but yeah the little details nitpicky details of this podcast from now on I don't care I don't care and it feels good not to care okay a few topics for this podcast manifestation and really yeah, I'm freaking struggle busting it this week, dude. It's, I'm doing this podcast in the daytime. I never do one in the daytime. It's probably messing up the lighting and it sucks probably. Again, I gotta learn. Who cares? I don't care. I don't care. Alright, manifestation. A couple podcasts ago, I started talking about how I don't like bicycle people. Like, I almost hit four of them a week in, uh, like, North Raleigh or whatever, wherever these bicycle people are from. So, it was the morning after the podcast when I talked about it. I wake up, and there's, like, it's a window of time in the morning, every morning, between, like, 8.15 and 8.45, maybe 9 o'clock, where if you take a left out of here, you're just going to get blinded by the light. You can't see nothing, and you have to like focus on the yellow lines in the middle of the road so you keep it in the street and you don't freaking clean out a mailbox or leave it in a ditch somewhere. 
So I'm just, that's what I'm doing. I'm just looking at the line. I can barely see anything. And out of my peripheral, I just see a whoo. There was a dude riding a bike on the right-hand side. And I couldn't see him at all from the sun. This is the morning after I talk about the bicycle people. How I'm going to hit one. Dude, Buddy was lucky, bro. He should have freaking played the number that day. Because he could have died easily. Instead of just hearing a whoo. I could have felt a boom, boom, boom. <laughs> dude. Leave them hindquarters at the house and get yourself one of them Pelotons, bro. It ain't worth it. No one needs that aggravation. Stay at the house. <sighs> Manifestation. Okay, so that same day, and it kind of seems bad on me for almost hitting things with my truck all the time. But that same day, I'm listening to an old podcast from like 2015. And it was, uh, that episode was recorded around Thanksgiving, so... For whatever reason, they go off, start talking about the importance of turkey and the symbolism of turkey, why you need a turkey, doesn't matter if it's like juicy or dry, or you you need a regular turkey, not a turduncan, not a freaking honey ham, but a an American turkey. For whatever reason. And bro, like one of the guys on the podcast, he said he was gonna eat Mexican food on, on Thanksgiving and they just almost beat him to death. The importance of the turkey, they were talking about this, not five seconds later. Something comes, I'm driving, like, I'm going 50 miles an hour around, like, a, whatever, like, a residential area. And out behind this bush steps something. I don't know, it was a dog or something. Bro, I see in the rear view mirror, like the side mirror, it was a turkey. Bro, I've never seen a turkey, like a real wild turkey. And then these dudes, it's whatever, manifestation. The universe is freaking weird, bro. It wasn't five seconds after they said the word turkey on a podcast from seven years ago that this freaking turkey walks out in the middle of the road. Weird. Manifestation. And ever since I talked about the alien apocalypse and the crazy weather, just every three days, we have some, like, tree-bending winds and freaking rains. I don't know, bro. Flash floods and stuff. I just got a thing, like, there's going to be a bunch of Category 5 hurricanes this year. They just don't stop. So, I guess I need to start talking about better things. Just like when Tupac and Biggie died. They were making a bunch of songs about dying and about death and shooting people. So, they freaking died. Universe manifested that. Around that same time, Snoop Dogg turned his stuff around, started making songs about, you know, whatever. Snoop! Freaking, like, club bangers. And look at Snoop today. He's just everywhere. He's on every commercial. Sitting, whatever. Uh, the general insurance, freaking corona commercials. He's everywhere. Snoop Dogg. Manifestation. I don't know what it is about it. I'm still doing the math on it, but there's something there. There's something there. <laughs> Almost hit a wild turkey with my truck. I've never seen one. That's nuts, dude. So, from now on, I reckon I... See, I told you the segues are just god-awful. They're just crumbling to pieces right in front of me. Oh, my notes. My notes... Dude, it's laughable. Alright, I need to manifest world peace, utopian societies, and my skill level in Halo and Oculus. That's what I need to start talking about. Maybe it'll happen. Yeah, from now on, I need to just manifest world peace, utopian society, and manifest myself to have wicked skills on Halo and Oculus. It's going up lately. I don't know if you've seen the last episode, but episode 52, Player's Lounge, has 15 minutes of Halo highlights at the end. Me and Pack Daddy and Big Blendage, dude, we just been going nuts. The past two weeks in particular, me and Pack Daddy have just ran the table on Halo. 
and we're back to our old ways. It feels freaking good. So I know I have like a hundred more captures that I haven't put a highlight to yet. So um, yeah, there's going to be some more Halo videos coming. And Oculus, it's going up. Your boy's improving. It's been probably freaking like 15 or 20 years since I've improved at anything. Anything. And now I see it right in front of my eyes. I'm, it's like I'm on the, I'm about to get a VGA tour invite. Freaking virtual golf association. Hook your boy up. Give me a sponsorship. Give me a scholarship. Out here trying to get a scholarship. Got my first 300 yard drive the other day. Spanking him out of the tee box, dude. Told you, dude. John Daly needs to keep his head on a swivel because your boy is going to be smoking potes out there, bro. Smoking potes. Ripping him out of the tee box, son. All right. I'm fired up because I had my first couple of wins the other day. I'm 2-0 and in the last like week or week and change. So... Me and Brady were playing a 1v1 the other day, and like, he was on a phone call. He was messing around. I, I can't say I beat him fair and square, really, but at the end of it, we weren't even paying attention. We were just talking, giggling, laughing, and sh just quick. It showed up at the 18th hole, and I won by one freaking stroke, and I had no idea. I wasn't sweating bullets or nothing. I was just playing my game, and I won by one. I didn't rub it in. I kind of just like looked at the score and walked off like like uh, Paolo and Chero. I just walked off and didn't say nothing to nobody. <sighs> but I won. I won my first freaking win. And then a couple of days later, I played Gary. I was down bad, son. I was spanking him in the Watsky, dude. I looked like Barry Bonds hitting home runs in San Francisco. There are people out there in canoes in the water just waiting for me to shank one in the freaking water. Oh, that was a bad joke. Anywho, on the back nine, I'm down eight strokes, dude. And whatever reason, I don't know if it just got to old Gary, but dude, he started sweating and spanking him into the water too, dude. And I had a clutch, like a 30-foot putt, bro, for the birdie. And I just come firing back, and I won again. So I'm, dude, I spent some time alone. I had a couple days where I got 27 holes in, and, uh, dude, this is so boring to anybody. Ah, worst podcast in the world. But your boy is getting the sauce on the freaking virtual golf, son. I got a nice McGregor suit on, my avatar. It's wicked, bro. So if any of you guys have an Oculus, hit me up, dude. Just type your thing in the comments and I'll get a freaking 18 with you. Probably get spanked. I'm climbing the ladder in golf and the Halo highlights are on freaking fire. So the video game life, I'm freaking 30 years old, man. Still knee deep in the murky waters. Freaking love life boring me to pieces. So... Get good at video games. It's whatever, dude. <laughs> All right. I told you I watch a lot of gangster movies. And one of the newer ones is called Irishman. Martin Scorsese produced it. Robert De Niro, Pesci, Ray Romano, all these guys are in it. And there's an actor from the other guys. It's, a, it's the guy that says September 08. From the other guys. Funny actor. I don't, I forget his name. But uh, it's a scene with him and the Irishman. Where. This is just some new terminology here for you. Terminology alert. Me and Pack Daddy on Halo. We got this thing now on the Irishman. At that one point. Skinny Razors this dude's name. He's in there talking to him. And he's like hey this is Frank. He drives a truck. He's like, oh, the hindquarters. Because Frank, dude, he drives a little cows around and sells hindquarters. You know what he said? He said, yeah, hindquarters. So, dude, now, if you just give someone the business on Halo or whatever, dude, the terminology is 
tenderizing them hindquarters, bro. <laughs> Tenderize them hind coochies. That's what we've been getting down on, son. Yeah, hindquarters. Oh, dude, Brady got his little hindquarters tenderized on the Golf Plus site. Oh, yeah, hindquarters. Stupid, dude. These notes suck. I'm improving through hard work and dedication to video games and that's freaking single life dude i smoke cigarettes and play video games and i'm good at both of them now son no one can smoke a freaking pot like your boy over here it's like you are what you eat i look like a wet pot when i get out there we started to play basketball on sunday nights and dude i am awful i just look like i washed ashore and I need a freaking CPR. I need Wendy Peppercorn to come over there and show me the business, son. I'm about to freaking pass out playing half-court basketball. I need to cut back on the potes. But through hard work and dedication, you don't need to breathe to be able to play video games. You just got to sit there and move your thumbs from time to time. And I can do that. I can manage that. And through hard work and dedication, your boy see an improvement. Anything is possible. And I told you earlier that the segues from topic to topic are just to pieces in this podcast. Talking about hard work and dedication, I thought of a freaking story that I've never told anybody the other day. And uh, I wouldn't have a reason to tell anybody. It's just something that weighs on my freaking soul. I think about this from time to time. I love basketball. It made me remember the other day. I haven't played in two years, like even three on three, four on four. I barely have shot a basketball in the past couple of years, but I grew up loving it, dude. I, I was out of my mind. I didn't want to do anything. I didn't want to hear nothing, do nothing, but play basketball all my life. Um, in seventh grade, I went to school in Oklahoma, and it was a football town, big time, tradition football town. And I like football. I've always loved playing football. But it's like in that town, it was a lot of politics involved. And I knew even if I did get out there and take the beating that even if I was good, I probably wouldn't see the field because no one knows me here. I'm a new kid. I'm not established. So I, I for sure couldn't play quarterback or like, something that mattered so what's the point uh, so I had him start a thing for me I talked to the athletic director and uh, I was the first person in the history of the school system to be in off-season basketball that's they just set up me they told me that I had to do 200 push-ups 200 sit-ups I had to run 20 laps around the football field and then I they gave me a basketball and I had the rest of the time to just shoot hoops by myself in the gym. So that's what I would do every day for like two years by myself. And then this kid Caleb joined and someone else, somebody else joined. And uh, it's just the three of us playing like 21 and it was cool. But for the longest time, it was just me. And people looked at me like I was Rocky Balboa, you know, like I was just by myself like working out. And it's like no one wanted to have nothing to do with me. I was the freaking loser by himself. And I didn't care because I just loved basketball. I knew that that's me. I, I didn't want to play football, even though I, I like it, love it. And I could be good at it. I could freaking sling a football. But I, I just would rather be in the gym. And there was this, okay, yeah, the whole reason of the story. It was this kid Caleb and this kid Robert that joined me. And Robert, he didn't play football because he was taller. I was tall, but he was really tall. And he was lanky and kind of uncoordinated. Um, but he had, like, the potential. He could block shots. He was like a Rudy Gobert type. He couldn't really score. He didn't have that, uh, that coordination yet. But if he worked, he could get there. And he knew that, and the coach knew that, and everyone knew it. He had, you know, the raw talent. 
so one day the coach tells this kid that Robert, and he's kind of nerdy. You could tell his family didn't play sports. And if you saw his mom, you could tell that she just got on his case about homework and getting in the honors club and the 4K whatever, do Like, you got to go to a academic tournament. I was never none of that. So he's in a whole different world, and he's in a place that he's uncomfortable. The coach is telling him, dude, you got to work on your left hand just whenever – you want to play basketball, don't do nothing but left-handed layups and do them like game speed. He's telling them, and me, I grew up in it. So I'm like, yeah, yeah, game speed, whatever, bro. Like, if you suck, you suck, you know. And Robert's just like, yeah, taking it all in. So that was a Friday when he tells him to just work on his left hand. So that night, my family, and I'm in like seventh grade. I can't drive or nothing. So we go to like this little party. We're watching football or something i don't know it's a friday i don't know what we're doing watching something and uh like we're swimming and playing pool and stuff at this guy's house and robert lived right down the street from this guy this story is so freaking long and it sucks but we get done partying and playing pool and jumping up and down and uh you know there's about 20 people at this house and we get in the car at the end of the night it's probably 12 30 it's after midnight maybe one in the morning we get in the car and we pull out of the driveway. We take the turn that goes past Robert's house to get out of this neighborhood. And I just had a general idea where Robert lived. I just heard he lived down the street. It's one in the morning and I look out of my window and I see this guy, Robert, in the driveway and he's playing basketball with a driveway light on, like Space Jam. He's out there at freaking 1 in the morning. And it's not like he's just shooting around and goofing off. The guy is game time, like sprinting, doing left-handed layups. He's going to the elbow, like a dribble, left-handed layup, picking it out of the net. He, he's running to the freaking elbow and doing it again over and over and over and it's one in the morning this guy's a nerd to me like he's never gonna have a shot I was never nervous about him getting time over me or anything like that just because I knew I had the juice compared to this guy but passing his house at one in the morning seeing him genuinely working on his game a nerd guy that did not have a shot, but he's out there working, bro. I I remember in the moment I was blown away. I just, I didn't tell nobody in the car. I just cried silently. This is so stupid maybe to other people, but seeing Robert genuinely working on his left-handed game at one in the morning on a Friday night, I cried for probably 10 minutes on the way home. And I was so, I don't know what it did. I don't know if it made me mad. I don't know if it fired me up or just I had to work harder than him. I remember after seeing Robert work, I got home and I lowered the goal to like eight and a half feet and I just dunked it as hard as I could like Blake Griffin for like two hours. It was like 3, 3.30 in the morning and I remember I was bleeding. That's why I stopped and went inside because my hands were bleeding because and I was crying dunking the basketball. Dude, he freaking fired me up, dude. I love that stuff, bro. Hard work and dedication. Even from the nerd guy. No offense, Robert. He's probably never going to see this. But seeing Robert doing left-handed freaking layups in the driveway, I'll never forget that. I think about that at least probably once or twice a month for whatever reason. It's just like when I don't think I want to freaking work hard or whatever. Uh, I feel lazy or something. That just gets me going for whatever reason. So God bless you, Robert. He has no idea. He hadn't thought about me in freaking 15 years, Robert. I'll never forget that story, though, dude. <laughs> Segways are god-awful, bro. 
It says, speaking of working out, my arms are sore from movie popcorn. Bro, I was like setting stuff up for the podcast yesterday, the first time I tried to record this. And I was like, dude, my freaking everything is sore. What did I do? And I was like, oh yeah, all the reps of freaking popcorn at Jurassic Park, dude. Which was terrible, by the way. This new Jurassic Park, bro, I might spoil a thing or two here in a second. So if you hadn't seen it, just fast forward. But, bro, it's an embarrassment to the franchise. It's worth the money just to go and get a laugh. Like, the acting is so bad, dude. So bad. They bring back all the OGs. I forget their names, like... Alan Grant and Dr. Sadler and whatever the other the cool guy with the shades on. They bring them all back, but it's just horrific acting. Chris Pratt did not want to be there, dude. He did not want to be there. You could tell he was so mad. He just he wanted to be doing Guardians of the Galaxy or something. He didn't want to be there at all. Awful movie. But it's one of those where like I went with my sister. And we laugh at stuff like that. If it's a bad movie, we'll think it's great just because of the laughs that we'll get from how bad it is. Like there's a movie, No Vacancy, that has like oh Luke Wilson, I think, in it. And a line he has. He said, what about the knife from your apple? The girl he was with was like cutting an apple in some shady motel where people are dying. He said, we need a weapon. How about the knife from your apple? Freaking Luke Wilson, relax, bro. Relax, dude. Ample. Bad movies with the right people to watch them with are sometimes even better than great movies. We laughed all the way home after that Jurassic Park movie. It wasn't supposed to be funny, but we laughed for freaking 30 minutes after leaving that movie theater all the way to the car and we even giggled about it the next morning so yeah it's worth watching it if you look at it from a objective eye and just laugh at the horrific things that they put in that movie my arms are sore from lifting the popcorn and it says Jurassic Park sucks slash is amazing so yeah I didn't even look and I was on, on the right track there Almost done, folks, and I don't know what time we're at. Who even cares, dude? I swear this is my third time recording this podcast, so I feel like I'm repeating myself, but I'm not. (sighs) It's freaking summertime. Be safe out there, peoples. I grew up in Oklahoma, going to the lakes and freaking wakeboarding and doing this and that, so I know know, what the life is like. I almost ran over my buddy. (laughs) I have a buddy named Tit. (laughs) <laughs> tit Henry, dude. And Tit Henry, I used to go to the lake with that old boy. We'd smoke cigars like in whatever, like junior high when we weren't supposed to have them. I'd bring a bunch of cigars down there to the lake. Me and old Tit Henry would light them up. So he'd go uh, whatever, noodling, catfishing at like three in the morning. And uh, dude, we'd just have a good time. And I always had too much pride to wear glasses i didn't want people to call me like freaking four eyes or cyclops or whatever so i would just always have horrible vision and not know who people are just like a fuzzy blob especially at a football game or something like this but um i was driving a sea-do at the lake one time with tit henry and someone else had a sea-do and he tit henry fell off the other guy's sea-do and i'm behind him And I see him last second, dude. I'm telling you, I'm awful eyesight. I can't see. And I almost freaking ran Tit over. He was like two feet. That that sentence is hilarious. Almost ran Tit over. (laughs) That's his freaking name. What do you want from me? Tit, dude, he was like sitting there waiting in the water. And I didn't see him till last second. Dude, I could have killed the guy. Oh, poor Ted Henry. Anywho, uh, 
so I know what it is going to the lake and summer times and all that. So I, I live in a place where there's a few lakes around and I'm at the gas station a few times a day. I drink coffee a lot. I drink a ton of coffee. And I get it from Sheets, the gas station, which is a freaking like, beautiful gas station. So I'm sitting there at the pump. I just pulled up and I hadn't got out yet. And this old boy pulls up right next to me in like a big lifted truck. And he got the big trailer with the boat with it's a huge boat with the big speakers and a nice paint job that like sparkles in the sun and this old boy hops out like he knows what's going on like he got it all figured out dude and he got like that you know, i don't know why just because a guy pulls a boat or can back a trailer like he thinks he got the freaking world by the tail dude this guy he could just tell he thinks highly of himself he gets out of his little truck and he's a short big guy with like flip flops on dude he gets out he plops out of his truck and you hear like the flippy floppies and with every step he's taking he's walking like mcgregor over there to the freaking pump dude and right when he plop like plops his little flippy floppies on the ground his truck and the trailer just goes and <laughs> starts going forward dude the look on this guy's face. He's wearing like those MLB glasses that the uh, biker people wear with the spandex. This guy, he just almost had a conniption. He goes, Ugh! whips it around, dude. He flippy floppies his way over to the door, whips his door open and goes, Ur! and he, you can see his little head go, Ur! he slams the truck brake on, bro. Oh, he get he didn't get out of the truck like McGregor the second time, dude. He got out of the truck like huh, huh, looking to see who saw, see if there's any hot chicks that saw him do it, dude. <laughs> I only laugh because I do stupid crap like that too, bro. In I think it was sophomore year of high school, we parked on like a hill, and I did that. I got out of the Ford Escape when it was still in drive. And I had to sprint down, like, and it was downhill, so I really had to run and barely caught it. it. about creamed old Bailey's truck or something. She was in it, too. It would have been gnarly. So I've done that. That's the only why. I guess that's why I think it's freaking hilarious. This old boy, dude, thinks he got it going on. He forgot to put it in park, dude. Oh. Be careful, people, doing your little summertime activities. Don't forget to put it in park and freaking don't run Tit Henry over. Keep an eye out for him. I don't think I have anything else for you people. It was a weird week. I told you that I tried to record this thing like three times and it didn't work. The camera, the freaking, all this crap. But also, we had a, a loss in the family this week. Uh... Our dog of 11 years, an English bulldog named Lulu, she passed, and uh, it's kind of just deflated us a little bit, you know. We kind of expected it, but it's still tough, man, you know. She had a lot of personality, even down to the end, man, but uh, her, she just couldn't keep up, you know. Couldn't get up and downstairs good. Whatever, bro, I'm not trying to be a Johnny Raincloud. I just had to talk about it, man. She was a good dog, and uh, the dog from all of our childhoods, you know. I got her, or we got her when I was in high school, and I'm a freaking, I'm half dead now. So she's been around a long time and gave us a lot of good laughs. So uh, her name is Lulu, but we called her, I called her Stinky Stink. Hi, Stink. And Chunky Monkey. Hi, Chunky. And uh, what else? Hootie, you know, a million. I got stupid names for everybody. But Stinky Stink was a good dog, man. So rest in peace to the Stinky Stink. And before I go, man, the other day me and Hoobie Doobie Wine went to Barnes and & Noble. And I found the Back in Black ACDC album. Some good bangers on here. Back in Black, Hell's Bell, Shoot the Thrill. Uh, you shook me all night long. I mean, 
solid one right there. And then Igor by Tyler the Creator. It won a Grammy, and there's some slaps on here, bro. So next vinyl soul searching is gonna hit for sure. So be on the lookout for that, dude. And that's it, man. I hope the camera has been recording the whole time. I have no freaking idea. And I hope I did okay on the Fireflies intro. The summertime anthem, bro. So if you need to run that back, uh, that is Fireflies, or Fireflies slowed reverb. And it has like a swampy looking thing with little flowers and whatever those things that frogs jump on. Lily pads or doodle lily, whatever they're called. I don't know. Lily, I don't know, dude. Anywho, this podcast sucks. Thank you for tuning in to episode 53 with your host with the most, DJ Witwicky. I'll be back in a few days with some vinyl soul searching, and you know what's going down, baby. Muchas gracias. Have a good week. <laughs>